we're going to jump to a slightly more advanced calculation. And it's probably going to take a few videos to do just based on the amount of space it's going to need and the amount of time that it's going to need. And there's going to be a few jumps we have to make here. So the basic idea is that I'm going to have a certain quantum state and I'm going to know what the initial, the initial state is. And then I'm going to ask what is the probability as a function of time, potentially, of measuring a specific state. So that's what I've written up here so far. So we have our initial state. We don't explicitly see time variation in it. We just know our initial condition. So we have to then use what we understand about how quantum states evolve with time. Then we have a definition of a particular state, which is different. These are not the same. And this would basically be the eigenstate of a specific measurement. This doesn't evolve with time. So this is the eigenstate correlating with measurement a1, and the idea being that some operator A times this state, or applied to that state, would give you A1 with your state back. So your measurement would be A1, it's corresponding to some operator, which is not the Hamiltonian, because it's not our energy eigenstate, that's not what we're asking about. And then the question is, what's that probability? So to give you an analogy, we are working in the E basis, so I think this video will just be the setup. So, analogy, right? So now, so let me start with spin, and now, this weird problem we're going to do. We would, for instance, use our basis as the Z direction, right? Here, we're using energy. So instead of writing it in terms of spin up and spin down in the Z direction, we're writing it in terms of energy. That's our basis. Then we have an initial state. And initial state would maybe be before it goes through an analyzer or something. For spin, I'm going to pick a specific one, but you saw other examples of this. Let's just say spin up in the y direction. Here, it's going to be this psi. Then we're looking to measure, and there's a few things to think about here there's going to be the measurement value, the state that corresponds to it, and then the probability, right? So when we talk about a measurement, there's the value. So for instance, for spin, that would have looked like plus or minus h bar over two in a direction. And so let's actually think about the x direction. So the state that course, and let's make it even more specific. Let's make it specifically the up h bar over 2. So that state would be plus x. And the probability, we know that it happens to be 50%. Right? We've done that calculation. We know it, what it would be. So now, the value would be a1. We don't know what it is. We don't even know. I could have added operator as a, as a fourth part of the measurement. So operator here would have been sx for uh, Right, for this situation, we're measuring spin in the x direction, so sx, and here it's a. So the state that corresponds to this measurement here is going to be a1, this ket state. And again, it's defined. We don't know what our operator is. Doesn't matter. We're looking for the specific state. And the probability is what we're trying to find. And so the same setup that we used in spin, we can use here. That effectively, we talked about it with the analyzer, in, out. So our initial state, and then the thing that we would get if we made this measurement. So we can set it up the exact same way. So I'll stop this here. In the next video, I'll actually start the calculation. The important thing is to know we're going to meet some physical reasons that we would actually be interested in a state like this. But for now, we're just practicing the mechanics. We're just practicing the math and the process of doing this. You have already seen it already. It is just like spin. But now we're adding time evolution. This measurement didn't depend on time. This one's going to. So that's why we're going to go through this. So don't be too tripped up on what this is. This operator has a corresponding set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. That's what's important here. And so we're not expressed in the basis of its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We're still using the energy basis. So in the next video, we'll actually start this calculation.